In this video, we are going to look at some of the basic tools for working with NURBS or curves and surfaces. We're going to go over several primary tools that you will find yourself working with. Additionally, we'll also talk about how to work with the vertices, but if you need to make edits to the specific items that you've made, you can do so. So the first thing is, is whenever you're working with any of the curve or surface elements, specifically in Maya, when you're on the left-hand side here, where you have things such as your NURB circle and square, but also your different curve tools, there are a couple things to remember. Number one, you want to be careful as far as which viewport you're actually working in. Especially when it comes to things like the EP curve, the pencil, and the Bezier curve tool, you don't really want to be working in perspective view. You want to make sure that you're actually working in either side or front, especially if you want it to extend up the Y axis. So to do this, you're going to want to click in the area that you're going to want to work in and then hit your spacebar to maximize that specific area. So I'm going to zoom in for a little bit here and pull my zero zero point down a little further on the base here. So to begin, I'd like to actually talk about the EP curve tool. The EP curve is just that. It will use live points to create a line on the grid. So to begin, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to come down and click and hold. Now, what you should notice is if you're following along, you're going to see this bright yellow X kind of appearing behind your cursor. That's the notation of the first vertex point and where it's going to be placed. So I'm going to go ahead and just place it there. And notice over in my outliner now, I have the start of the curve one. So now I can go ahead and drag to make a second point. And if I click and hold, you can actually kind of position as you're working. Now here's the catch with the EP curve tool. It's going to give you very organic curves. And if I click now, you can see how it's actually affecting and bending overall with the curve that I can't get that straight line element. Now I can snap with the shift key as far as the location goes, but I can't really go and get a straight line of any type. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and drag this up and place it. Now, also in this demonstration here though, let's say accidentally I come over and I click and I let go and I didn't mean to actually make this vertex point. If you hit the backspace on your keyboard, it'll allow you to undo that and you can continue your drawing process. So maybe I come up here and then whenever you're done making the line, you can go ahead and either hit the selection tool in your toolbox on the left hand side or what I like to do is just hit the enter key. And now you should see a light green outline showing your overall design and layout as far as the line goes. So that's an example here and I'll double click. So this was to rename it the EP curve tool. I'm going to go ahead right now and bump this off to the side. The next tool I want to talk about is the pencil curve tool, or it could also be considered a freeform tool. It's just like drawing with a pencil. So you go ahead and activate the tool and I can begin freely drawing. This would work really nicely with a stylus. Notice that you get those very smooth, crisp edges and you have a lot of control overall as far as the design goes. So I'll go ahead and name this curve Pencil Tool. And then I'm going to go ahead and bump that one over as well. The last tool that I want to show you as far as drawing curves is all the way at the very end, right before you actually start into the Bezier shapes. And this is the Bezier Curve Tool. If you have worked with Photoshop and Illustrator's Pen Tool, this is going to feel very familiar to you. So I'm going to go ahead and click and I'm going to start by making a point. Now there's two things that you can do here. You could actually just click and make the point or if you notice here, if I click and drag out, I get what are called barbells. In these barbells, they're determining both as far as the strength of the curve and also the direction of the curve. The direction of the curve is controlled by the barbell that is attached to my crosshair cursor. 
the strength is controlled by the barbell going in the opposite direction. So if I go ahead here and let go, I've now set up as far as those barbell points. I can go back and tweak before I make a second edit, but now if I go ahead and drag up, you see how already I have that swing of the new line there as far as the overall curve. So this can give you some organic feelings as well as far as the overall design of your tool. So I'll go ahead and make a couple more here and then I'll hit enter. Notice too, in comparison to its counterparts as far as the pencil and the EP curve, the Bezier actually comes out much differently and it looks just like that. It has the Bezier curve option there. So I will call this curve tool. Lastly for this video, I just want to take you in and show you how you can actually use your move rotate tools as far as being able to edit now the specific lines before you do anything with them as far as revolving or extruding or anything along those lines. For each of the lines here, you can actually right click on them very similar to a polygon in Maya. And what you're going to want to look for is control vertex. If I click on the control vertex, you can see all of the different vertices that was created whenever I drew this line. Now just to show you in comparison here, if I come over to what I made with the Bezier curve, you see that I have much fewer points to work with. However, not only can I work with the individual points, so let's say I click on this point right here, make sure my move tool is active, I can actually come in and edit as far as the location and pull, but I can also come in here and click on and rotate the barbell points that I would like to have change. Additionally, when you're working with any of these, you can then right click and go back into object mode and it'll change the editability of it. So let's go ahead and look at the EP curve though. And I'll do a few demos on that too. Once again, it has much fewer vertex points in comparison to the pencil tool. But one thing to pay attention to whenever you're clicking on a vertex point, like if I highlight this one right here, you can actually see overall the area that it's highlighting. Now if I come up say to one of the upper vertex points, like let's go all the way to the top here, it's a little hard to see but what you should notice is you can see how the top portion is a white color while the rest of the curve has turned into sky blue. This is giving you a range of the area that this specific vertex point is going to affect. So if I go ahead and start pulling, notice how this entire portion here is being edited, but the bottom portion is not. Now if I come in and choose this point, you can see here how it is actually affecting much more of the curve. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into object mode. And those are some of the basics as far as working with your different tools here. The only other two to show you that you might use in the future with the curves and surfaces is the NURB circle and square. Unlike the actual shape counterparts as far as the sphere and the cube, the circle and the square are just that. And these two, it's okay to hop back into your perspective view by using the spacebar, selecting, and then spacebar again. That you can just click and it'll make the shape for you. You can move this, rotate it, and you can even scale it as far as its size goes. And to take it one step further so you can see what it looks like, if you go back into Control Vertex, once again you can see, like the line counterparts here, it has the same similar controls as far as as long as you choose one of those vertex points, you can come in and make edits as far as the overall shape is concerned. And that shows you some of the basics of the tools that you'll be using inside of Maya. This is a great way to get started with NURBS that you can then integrate into some of the other tools such as Revolve, your loft, extruding, and even the bi-rail.